All right, to the Sask Provincial, Scotty's and Balgoni Pool B action had Maidstone's Jill Shume earning an impressive win last night, defeating Michelle Englott. Up next was Brett Barber. First end, Shume would score four, then steal a pair in the second and third ends to take an 8-0 lead. She goes on to win 13-5 in eight ends. Amber Holland gets her first victory at the Scotties with a 9-5 victory over Nancy Martin. In Pool A action, Chantel Eberly goes on to defeat Deanne Miller 10-4 in that one to improve to 2-0. And, oh. and Mandy Selzer improves to 2-0 oh as well after picking up a 4-1 victory over Penny Barker. To the AJHL, the Bonneville Pontiacs were looking to sweep their back-to-back -back contests in Grand Prairie. Now goals from Dan Weedman, Luke Mihura, Tanner Dusick and Owen Ferguson were more than enough, earning them a 4-1 victory over GP. Stephen Klein would stop 23 of 24 shots for the win. The Ponts leapfrogged the Storm for sole possession of third in the AJ North. Now the Lakeland Wrestlers women's basketball team are coming off a pair of losses to one of Canada's top ranked teams. And as Matt Schumont reports, the girls are putting the losses behind them and looking to bounce back this weekend. It was a bit of an eye opener for the wrestlers last weekend, outscored 154 to 107 in a pair of games by the fourth ranked team in the country. I thought we were shell shocked both nights to start obviously showed by the first half scores. Second half both nights we played even with them. Um, part of that is probably them stepping off the gas a little bit but it showed that we can compete. For us to beat a team like that though we're going to have to play pretty much flawless ball. We can't turn it over as much as we did and we can't shoot as poorly as we did on the weekend. Now the girls prepare for another test as they welcome Grand Prairie for a couple of home games. The Wolves who are in 10th just trailed the wrestlers by two points for sixth place in the ACAC standings. It's a team that works really hard, well coached. Um, you look at them on paper, they don't blow you away, but they stay in games, they stay in games. So we really got to do a good job mentally of putting them away if we have the chance. And on Saturday, they're phenomenal with a quick turnaround. That's something we haven't experienced yet. We just really need to focus on boxing out and playing good defense and getting stops and our offense will come. I think we have a really strong offense and we're good at running it, so we're confident with that. The wrestlers have had to deal with the injury bug for the majority of the year, but King says this will give the rookies and the rest of the team to up their game as they approach the playoffs. Due to our schedule, it's very thick in the second semester, so we're trying to save girls so that we're fresh come end of February into March. So that's our main goal right now. Um, Playoff-wise, we're going to be there with our standings right now, but we want to continue to improve. Obviously, it is to win as many games as we can because that puts us in a better playoff position, but we want to work on all the things that we know that we need to do in order to beat the teams that we've already lost to that might face us in playoffs. So I think it's really important that we're maintaining all the things that Chris is telling us to do, and that's going to be a big, important key for us. Tip-off for Friday's contest is at 6 o'clock. Matt Schumont, Newcap Sports. Today, two of the Alberta Scotties in Lethbridge. It was the A-event semifinal between Renee Sonnenberg taking on Casey Scheidegger. Now, the last time these two teams met was over a month ago in Lloydminster with Sonnenberg coming out on top. Now, it was close through four ends, but a steal of two in the fifth and steals of one in the sixth and seventh end sealed Scheidegger's fate seven to one in eight ends. Sonnenberg will now face Valerie Sweeting in the A-event final winning in extra ends over Tiffany Game 7-6. Elsewhere, the B event, Laura Crocker picks up 2 in the 10th to defeat Lisa Aimi 8-7, while Jesse Kaufman and Delia De Jong wrap up in 8 ends. Kaufman takes it 10-3. Now, Crystal Webster defeats Taryn Hamilton today 6-5, while Shannon Kleibrink comes from behind 6-5 down to win 8-6 over Christy Moore. Now, being a pitcher is easily one of the toughest positions in all of baseball. And on this week's Superstar Next Door, Matt Schumont tells us about a young girl who's become one of the toughest hurlers in the border city. Taryn Davidson always knew she wanted to become a softball player, having strong family ties in the sport. My whole family's been doing it, and they just got me into it. And I like the sport because it's competitive and it's really fun. Starting out as an outfielder, she converted to a pitcher wanting to become more active on the defensive part of the game. I wanted to be more into the action of the game, so then I started pitching and I stuck with it. Taryn's dad, Vaughn, has been with her pitch for pitch and says he is proud to see his daughter develop into one of the Border City's finest pitchers. Well, as a parent, I think the fulfilling thing is um, seeing that she's willing to work at something and, and progress and and really um, just do her best. I think that's been fulfilling. The balls and the strikes and the wins and the losses are, 
are one thing, but to see how she conducts herself, that she's willing to put in the work, is something that'll, to, that'll carry with her beyond ball. And that's been probably the most fulfilling part for me. Having early success in her young career, including winning a bronze medal at Provincials, she has set the bar high for the upcoming season. I would love to make the Blues roster and, pit, and represent my team at Provincials. And my goals for this year, I want to be more, like hit more targets and I'd like to work on different pitches. Matt Schumont, Newcap Sports.